conservation of total mechanical energy. Total mechanical energy, we defined that earlier in the chapters, uh, total mechanical energy of a system will be the sum of the energy of motion of the object, the kinetic energy, and the energy of position, GPE, gravitational potential energy. There's also an elastic potential energy, but we won't be doing that here. That'll be later. Uh, that's a bit spring, rubber bands, things like that store energy. We'll hold off on that. So our total mechanical energy for now is gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy. For a closed system, we have the conservation of energy formula. Initial energy is final energy, and we're going to rewrite that. We're going to take this GPE and KE, put it down there, and see this little subscript here? That's initial, and this here is final. So when would GPE be zero? When would kinetic energy be zero? The kinetic energy of an object is zero when the object is not moving. The GPE of the object will be zero when the object is on the ground. That's typically where we choose our GPE reference point as zero. Let's apply the conservation of energy to a roller coaster traveling on its track because after all, that is the unit name. We're talking about roller coasters. At position A, and that's over here, the roller coaster has 40 joules of gravitational potential energy and it's at rest, it's not moving. How much total mechanical energy, E total, does the coaster possess at A, right here? How much kinetic energy does the coaster have at A? Please go to the next slide to check your answer. And here's our answer. At position A, the roller coaster, this was a given, has a GPE of 40 joules. And it's at rest. If it's at rest, that means it has no kinetic energy. So how much total mechanical energy does it have? Well, that's the sum of GPE and KE. But since KE is equal to zero, the total mechanical energy is 40 joules. It's all in the form of GPE. And how much kinetic energy does it have at A? Well, it's at rest, so it has zero joules, no kinetic energy. Now the roller coaster does what a roller coaster does and goes down here to position B. At position B, it has 15 joules of gravitational potential energy. How much total mechanical energy, E total, does it have at B? And then how much kinetic energy does it have at B? Work on that for a little bit and go to the next slide to check your answer. So at position B, our answers are the total mechanical energy doesn't change. Energy is conserved. There are no external forces acting on the roller coaster. An external force would be friction, for example, but we're assuming there's no friction. So total mechanical energy is 40. See right here, all the GPE in the beginning, that's our total mechanical energy. So how much kinetic energy do we have? Well, we have GPE plus KE equals E total. So the kinetic energy is the total energy minus GPE. 40 minus 15 gives us 25 joules of kinetic energy. And finally, the roller coaster, having started, got pulled up here, comes down, goes up. Now we're at point C. What's the total mechanical energy there? And how much kinetic energy does it have at C? Now we're at position C, where we have a gravitational potential energy of 25 joules. What's the total mechanical energy? It's still 40 joules. It's the amount of energy we had at the start because there are no external forces acting, so energy is conserved. How much kinetic energy do we have? Well, that's going to be the total energy minus the gravitational potential energy. So it's 40, that's the total, minus 25, and we get 15 joules of kinetic energy. Use conservation of energy now to determine the missing energy values at these positions for a ball of one kilogram that starts from rest at a height of three meters use GPE equals MGH, we will assume that the total energy is the same everywhere. Or there are no external forces acting. We're ignoring air friction here. So give this a shot and we'll go to the next slide to check your answer. But let's, let's start this for you. At the top, what's your kinetic energy? Zero, it's not moving. What's your total energy? Okay, hang on, we're not going to do that just yet, but let's find your GPE. GPE will be mass, 1, times G, which is 10. So we have 10 times the height, 30 joules. So we have 30 joules of GPE, no KE. So what's our total mechanical energy? 
30 joules. Then what do we have down the right side column? We set it right here, it doesn't change. This would all be 30. So please fill out the rest of it. Let's do an energy chart for a drop ball. So over here, we have our GPE at any point, we have our KE at any point, and then we have the total energy. And we want to do that for these four heights. So we start at the top. At three meters, we have a mass of one kilogram. So we need to calculate the GPE because that's all the data we have right now. So GPE is MGH. When you multiply one kilogram times three meters times 9.8 meters per second squared, you get 29.4 joules. Since the ball is at rest, you're holding it, there is no kinetic energy. So the total energy will be 29.4 joules. That's the same as our GPE because there is no kinetic energy. Now we can fill in all of this because the total mechanical energy of the system will stay the same. There are no external forces. So next we go to find GPE again, but this time at 2 meters. So then it's M times G times 2 meters, 19.6 joules. At 1 meter, M times G times 1 meter, 9.8 joules. And at the bottom, there is no GPE. The height is 0. So we now have all of this filled in. Kinetic energy will be the total energy minus GPE. So 29.4 minus 29.4 gives 0. 29.4 minus 19.6, 9.8. 29.4 9.8, 19.6. Hey, that's kind of cool. And then finally at the bottom, it's all kinetic energy. So what's happening to this ball as it falls? It keeps getting more kinetic energy, which means it's speeding up, which makes sense because gravity is accelerating it downwards.